When I was a, a young boy, one of my hobbies was unlimited hydroplanes. Uh, I got into it uh, somehow and following all the races. And these are these boats that go like 200 miles an hour on the straightaway. And um, so I build, my dad would help me build boats, uh, you know, miniature unlimited hydroplanes, and I'd drag them around on a rope back of my bike. Um, so one of the races, this was uh, 1966 uh, on the Potomac, uh, where 14 boats uh, entered, and uh, Don Wilson and Rex Manchester each said, we're going to win. And uh, they were kind of, you know, talking, trash talking to each other all week. And sure enough, uh, they both won all their heats and went into the final. And uh, sure enough, they were uh, neck and neck all through the race. They came out of the final turn totally even. They came racing down 200, I don't know, 200 miles an hour or more. And uh, just at the end, Rex Manchester pulled ahead. And, uh, but just after he did that, his boat shot up in the air and it came crashing down, just exploded. This is a guy who had a wife and kids. And uh, so next week, Bo uh, next day, Boston Globe said, uh, victory rings hollow, total wipeout. Uh, today, uh, we're talking about our total wipe, wipe out before God. This is the fifth in our series, Christianity 101. I hope you've been enjoying it. Hope my little talks have been helpful to you, uh, whether you're doing this by yourself or you're leading a group. Um, so in chapter one, uh, the Apostle Paul makes this case that everybody can know God uh, just by looking outside at the beauty and how finely tuned this universe is. And, uh, but w many people deny God. And so the wrath of God is revealed against them for ignoring him. Uh, then in chapter two, he talks about the fact that we all naturally as human beings judge other people. And we, uh, the fact that we do that suggests that we know right from wrong. How else could we judge somebody else? And we, uh, and, and so Paul says, you're, you're without excuse you who judge other people. Chapter three, he talks to religious people. Religious people in those days were the Jews. And he said, all religious people, even they fall short uh, of God's glory. And so basically his case is that all of us have sinned. Romans chapter three, verse 10, if you want to follow along, uh, I'm reading from the NIV. Paul writes, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They've become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And in those nine verses, Paul gives a pretty bleak a portrayal of humanity. No one does good. No one seeks God. So I want you to turn to someone in your group and ask that question. Can that be? No one does good? I mean, come on. We have uh, the flood in uh, South Carolina uh, 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 last week. We have the, 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 the floods in Florida with the hurricanes last year. Uh, think back to Hurricane Katrina. People did all kinds of heroic things. Or how about 9-11 in New York City? People did all kinds of wonderful things. So do you think, here's the question, does no one do good? Go ahead and discuss that. Okay, so I think it turns out that Paul is not making the case that no one ever does good. Humans can do kind things, thoughtful things, sensitive things. People can fall in love and love other people. But compared with God's goodness, his holy perfection, no one does good. So I want to put it this way. No one does good enough. So now uh, he ends this little section in verse 20. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight, because no one does good enough. 
by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. So the question I want you to discuss is, okay, if no one becomes, is declared righteous before God through keeping the law, then why did God give us the law? The law represents the Old Testament and now the New Testament. Why does God give us the Bible if no one can be declared righteous through it? All right, once you discuss that, then you're on your own. Uh, go through the journal. If, if you're studying that, and uh, have a discussion. Pray for each other. Have a great time. Thanks.